Okay, so I want you to uh, tell me when I've got you know, five minutes left because I tend to, I have a lot to say and I'll take up all the extra time that these folks uh, oh, you're share. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first of all, I did this project with um, Roger Teal of Demand Trans. He and I have worked together on it. And we, um, we responded to a CCRP proposal, which was pretty broad based. And it was, it, it, it was broader based than I expected it to be. I was thinking about this need to exchange data for um, uh, transportation providers. And in this, in this uh, proposal, it talked about trip planners. Huh. That's interesting. And what we ended up doing, and I'm, I'm really glad whoever put that in, I don't know who it was, um, but what we ended up doing was taking a pretty broad scan of what's been done and what the environment is for exchanging data, and, and then kind of breaking it down and getting back to the simple, the basics of what we need to do in order to move forward. Um, we used a framework of what we, we are calling discovery data and transactional data. And the transactional data is what we've been talking about. How do you, what data do you need, the minimum amount of data to exchange information so that somebody else, so you can transfer a trip to someone else. Um, the, the data that's needed to schedule a trip, to dispatch it, and to report on it. And I guess to bill, to invoice it as well. The discovery data is something that a lot of VTCLI grantees need. And that's all about finding out what services are available. So it is um, information on where services go, how frequently they operate, where they operate, and what it costs, the fares. So somebody can figure that out. And so for the VTCLI grantees who are just doing the information and referral side, that is, that is a critical um, aspect. And when we looked at this, um, we, we spent a good amount of time talking with folks, and we talked with almost all the, the uh, software vendors um, who provide the scheduling software. Um, we also talked with a variety of folks who, who have other kinds of software programs. Um, and we talked to the, the agencies that I would consider having, you know, being on the cutting edge or having emerging applications. So Bruno was one of them. Um, Ride Connection is another one. So we talked to a lot of folks about what they were doing. We didn't talk much with Rich because Roger's been working with you, so we knew what was going on there. <laughs> but um, that really helped to gel um, uh, what people needed and how these pieces of information work together. And so the, in terms of understanding the problem, um, one big piece of it is that we just need to understand the data that needs to be transferred to enhance productivity, enhance mobility. Um, and the other part of it is we also need to understand the context in which software vendors and transportation providers operate. Because a lot of industries, in a lot of industries, this has happened um, organically. Um, the medical industry, the, the airline industry, the the uh, GIS industry. It's happened because people had a reason for it to happen. That is not the case in this industry. So it's going to take some leadership to move it forward and, and to change things. Um, so the, the two problems that, that we focused on, one is how to standardize data for both discovery and transactional functions. And the other is that we really have to have a means to engage software vendors and transportation agency um, purchasers um, sitting around the table to describe what's needed. Uh, one of the things that we found in our research is that there is definitely a mismatch in knowledge between what your typical um, purchaser knows about the software and what the vendors know. And, and we need, the, the purchasers are the ones who need to be saying, this is what we need. So building that capacity um, and that knowledge of information technology so they can ask the right questions and know if they're, that they're getting answers and services that are really going to meet their needs is important. Uh, so in the current environment, there are really less than a dozen companies that provide scheduling software. 
Um, mo several of those companies have trip planners. There's a variety of independent trip planners that have been developed. Um, is anyone here associated with the 511 system? We've got one, good. So some of the 511 systems have done some tremendous work, uh, particularly I think San Francisco Bay Area was a real leading edge, but San Diego, Los Angeles, Washington, Oregon, New York, New York have all done tremendous jobs of pulling together some of this, this information. And, and we need to have people not just on the scheduling side, but on the discovery side as well, so that the information um, lines up and we're able to communicate. Um, and for the discovery data, the trip planners are the, the most relevant type of software. Now, on the discovery side, there, there's been a boom. Um, the Google Transit project has developed the general transit fee specifications. And this has allowed that, the, the mapping side, the fixed route information, um, to just go forward by leaps and bounds. There was a point a couple of years ago when, a, when there was a critical mass of systems that started using um, Google, the general transit fee specifications. And, and when it got to that point, pretty soon you're seeing it everywhere. And you're seeing developers write applications to do amazing creative things, and especially for the disabled community. I mean, I, the, some of the applications that are out there are, are mind-boggling. So, to step back for a minute, what we did is we, we did that survey, and we talked with both vendors and transportation providers. And um, I want to go through some of the main issues that we found. Um, as Larry said, almost everybody's in agreement we need these standards. The question is just, how do we get them? And uh, some of the concerns noted by the vendors, one is that competition is an important aspect of the, the market economy. And so it's really important that the standards be neutral, not favor any vendor. Um, there are concerns about the process of establishing the standards, who's going to be involved, um, who's going to be responsible, and that's the question of the day, who will be responsible, and what will be the role of the vendors, um, and also what happens if only some of the vendors participate, is then others don't. So those are all, all good questions. When we talked with transportation providers, and we talked with a wide range, um, what we found is by and large, knowledge is really limited. I mean, we have a conversation with somebody like Bruno and his group, and the knowledge level is up here, but, but truly, folks, there are you know, maybe a dozen or two dozen agencies across the country that have high levels of knowledge, and, and there's, there's a huge gap there. Um, the RFPs are often generated by consultants, so we need to make sure, and it's a good use of consultants, I say that. <laughs> but but it's, it's bringing together two complicated fields. Transportation delivery, particularly command response, is complex. So is the IT world. And so if you are a transportation provider, you, you don't have the ability to get into that level of complexity. Um, so that's, that's a good use, but we have to educate the consultants. Um, I, you know, I'm a generalist. I'm not the IT part of this team. That's Roger. <laughs> um, and the other thing that we found is that the early adapters have very few models. So these guys are out on their own figuring out things. And it's great that they're doing it, uh, but, but, uh, and we'll all learn things from them, but it's, it's really cutting new, new ground. Um, so, with that said, um, one of the things that everybody agreed upon was that a minimalist approach is the best way to, to do this. Um, establishing just a few standards that everybody can agree upon is the way to start. Uh, Bruno, you mentioned that in your conversation, and I think Kevin did as well. Um, and so we have put together a preliminary list of uh, data standards. And that, that list, you know, we want it to be really limited so we don't get bogged down in things. But what we figured out was we had five categories. We need information about trips, uh, passenger data, organizational data, financial, and vehicle data. 
And amongst all those items, there were 50 different data elements. Uh, Roger had identified 37 as being mandatory. So that's quite a few elements already that we're talking about. And just because I wanted to double check things, I went back to John's Idea 50 report, which has some great technical appendices. And they, uh, and I, I wanted to compare and see their list of, of data standards to ours. Well, it was much lengthier and it covered fixed route services and this and that. But I realized that we had forgotten on passenger data the telephone number or contact information. So make that 38 required elements. <laughs> uh, and, and I think there's a lot of room for discussion about which the, the necessary uh, data elements are. I have a couple of handouts here at the front. I only made 12. <laughs> but if you know, if, if you want to leave your name and email, I will make sure you get a copy of the full report. These two handouts, um, one of them covers just characteristics of transactional and discovery data, which people I think have found real helpful in terms of understanding how these two sides work together. And the other is a list of those initial protocols and data elements, which I think is great for discussion. So, like I said, there's 12 of them, but we can get you the report. That's the easier way to do it. Um, I do want to step back a little bit because in our recommendations, what we're talking about is getting some sort of group together that includes both providers, the purchasers, and the vendors, and the agencies, the associations that work with these folks because those are the folks who need to sit around the table and hash out, well, should we use time increments for boarding as one of the data elements, or should we use you know, a, a, some other way of, of identifying that time requirement? Um, and so that's a pretty cut and dry task. Where it gets more difficult is when you start talking about how you're going to exchange that data. Are you going to, it, there, there's all kinds of other aspects. There's business rules around how you're going to work with the data, and then there's how you're going to exchange it. Bruno, you mentioned using an API, application programming interface, and that and that is what they're doing at VIA as well. And that allows for bilateral communication. There's also the concept of hubs, and Trapeze is working with a, a hub system and developing that. Route Match essentially uses that with their whiteboard. So there are, there are a variety of ways to do this. We think it's important to go back to the basics and just get agreement on those data pieces first and get that group of providers and vendors then putting together, I guess I would call it a strategic plan to talk about the additional data elements, to talk about what the communication protocols will be and how to make that work and um, to to identify a phasing plan for moving from systems that are not based on standard data to those that are, because there's going to be a transitional period as we migrate to that. The other term that I would like to, to introduce, and, and that's one that is explained very well in the idea of 50 report, is what people are doing today. And what they're doing today is building translators use data dictionaries, and they say, if this system uses all these terms, and this system uses all these terms, it's like an English to Spanish translation. If we bring that, that's, if we tr transfer that data, let's tr we need to translate all those terms so it makes sense to the receiving system. And the Idea 50 report talked about putting together a universal translator, which is a fine idea. What we're talking about with the data standards is making sure that you have a foundation so you don't have to translate that key data. And one of the challenges in this is that all of us have this vision of what can be done. I can go on uh, Travelocity and, and find out information about trips and make a plane reservation if my flight gets canceled. Somebody is, the, the airline is able to put me on another flight we know it can happen, we have this vision. And 
it's important to remember that there's a lot of steps between where we are and making that vision a reality. So we have some emerging uh, providers who are really doing wonderful things and who are going through all those baby steps. Um, but I think it's really important to get started and, and begin working on those, those really fundamental, maybe kind of boring things of identifying those standards, coming to an agreement so that we can move forward